Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do another quick tip tonight using uh, some of the calibration tools that are built into Orca Slicer. This is probably going to be a multi-parter because there's quite a bit of tools. But we're going to start off with the basics. And really, uh, these can be used for the most part, regardless of what flavor of firmware you have. Now, if you're running Clipper, so if you've got a, you know, a Bamboo, if you've got a K1, if you've got something running Clipper, you can pretty much run all of these calibration tools. And if you're running something Marlin-based, right, like, like me, or I've got Ender 3s and stuff like that, then um, then most of these will work for you. And there's some and there's the differences and there's reasons why. But you can use the the lion's share of what's included. And the fact that these are just included um, is is really kind of nice. Um, takes a lot of the 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 um, the work out of setting up like temperature testing and calibration testing and flow testing things like that with some of these built-in uh, jobs and tools to really help dial it in. So where you find it is everything is up here in this very top left corner under calibration. And there are several tools up here, uh, temperature, flow rate, pressure advance, retraction, tolerance testing, things like that. Um, where you're going to run into differences are like if you're running something Marlin based versus Clipper based, this pressure advance is probably not going to be useful uh, on Marlin. So the difference being is with Marlin, you know, it's it's linear advance versus pressure advance. And so while it's it's two different methods of trying to accomplish the same thing, really kind of tweaking and tuning the pressure advance stuff if you're on a Marlin machine isn't really gonna they're really gonna do anything for you. But flow rate, temperature testing, retraction testing, all of that good stuff is um is great. It's built in. So um so the first thing we're gonna we're gonna talk into, because I think it's probably sort of table stakes and the most important is flow rate. I think lots of quality issues, print quality issues could stem from the fact that your flow rate may not be as tuned in out of the box from a slicer perspective as it should be. And so running this simple flow rate uh, test um, and making a couple of tweaks, uh, I think could potentially solve a couple of like base issues, right? And then we'll get into once you've got your flow rate tweaked and tuned to where it ought to be, then we can run a temperature test. Then we can run retraction testing. Um, and the tolerance testing. Uh, I think the results of those tests will be will be increased, and the 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 quality of those tests will be increased once you have your flow rate dialed in. So the first thing you want to do is when you're doing the calibration test for the flow rate is make sure you're in a brand new job, right? So if you're already in something and whatever, go home. It's a new project. You want something brand new right off the bat. The other thing you'll want to do is come in here under your whatever filament you're going to be you're going to be running this test against. Let's just call it PLA for now. You want to click on your presets over here and you want to take note of whatever your flow ratio is in this field. So by default, like out of the box for me, it was 0.98, right? So 98% essentially. So my 0.98 was what was in there by default. After doing my calibration testing and my flow rate calibration stuff, this is what my new flow rate is. And so I'm going to show you how to get to this. But you want to take note of whatever this is. So if you haven't ever touched it before, it's probably 0.98. But open it up. Check it out, right? Close that down. Write it down somewhere at 0.98. Um, and then what we're going to do is come up here to the top left under calibration. We're going to hit flow rate. And this is done in two passes, right? So you're going to do a base pass, which basically prints out uh, a bunch of objects using various uh, settings. Um, for your printer to go test with. And then you're going to take some pictures or look really close and see which looks and feels the best to you. So once you pick that, it loads in these nine objects. Um, and you can see here, you've got some orange stuff. And that indicates that it has made some changes to your settings. Don't mess with it. Let it do its thing. Don't touch it. Don't change anything else, right? It's printing out a 0.3 layer height. Your first layer is a 0.3. There's some changes down here. Avoid crossing walls. It's making some changes to any, anyway, it's making some changes to stuff in your global settings and then at an object setting uh, as well. So if you click on objects here, you can see you have these nine objects and each one has its own um, set of settings tweaked in here. So there's really nothing you need to do at this point other than slice the plate, export your G code and go run the file. <clears throat> It'll take something less than an hour to do. <clears throat> but you can see what it's going to do here is it's going to run these nine different settings and it's going to give you essentially sort of a flow rate score, right? So zero would be at, at, at the 0.98 flow rate, right? Before I made my tweaks and tunes, your the zero here is going to be with your current flow rate. And then it's going to do a bunch of 
different variations of flow rates across the board to get you to get to a, a potentially a new base flow rate number to get to. And then pass two is to fine tune it. So you run this and then you look at it. So let's take a look at what mine look like. Hold on. I should have pulled this up. Uh, here we go. And here we go. So here's what mine look like. So here is my zero and it actually looked pretty darn good. Uh, so my 0.98 flow rate was actually pretty good. Um, and when I was originally on the, you know, lo looking at this on the print bed, feeling it, getting a, uh, you know, from a look and feel perspective, um, what looked and felt best to me was a negative five. Now, if you look, if you, if you really zoom in, you can, there's, there's flaws and a little bit of everything here. But so if we look at the top, like where it's the, you know, where you're positive. So you got zero and you got plus five, plus 10, plus 15, plus 20. Well, these all across the top are pretty much like sandpaper. So they're all over extruded. None of these look anything close to good, right? So you rule those out immediately. And I look down here, um, going this way at the negative number. So you got your zero, and then you go negative five, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. <clears throat> Everything down here in the bottom row is way under extruded, right? You've got a bunch of gaps. You can see the gaps in between the lines. So all of these are out, right, for me. So it was something around here in this middle row, which was going to be my pick. Now, look, I could have just kept it at zero and been completely fine. Um, but there were a couple of areas that I felt like when I, run, when I ran my finger across some of this, there was a little bit of over extrusion around some of this. Uh, definitely on the plus five, it was, it was actually really, it felt really good. But you can tell that there is some ribboning and some things like that. So I, I ruled out the plus five and I sort of, decided that well, I, I like this negative five. So um, I took this negative five number and this is what I'm going to base it on. Now, these may not be your results, your may be different, but what you need to make sure now is that you're taking note of whatever number you're going to go with. So I'm going a negative five, right? So now what you need to do is take, um, you need to take these new numbers, plug in your new flow rate and figure out, um, and figure out what your new flow rate's going to be. So essentially, if we come up here, uh, let's let's bail out. Let's go back to prepare. If you come down here and uh, hit the calibration and go to tutorial again, you'll get a new tab that pops up. <clears throat> and you can come down here where it shows you, which it's actually a really great tutorial. It tells you everything. But essentially what the formula is, is your old flow ratio, you're going to multiply that times, right, 100 plus or minus whatever your modifier is, right? So my modifier in this case was that minus 5. So if we do the whole, um, um, if we solve this equation, right, we're using PEMDAS, right? So we're going to do everything in the, in the parenthesis first. So in my case, it's 100 minus 5, so I got 95. So I'm going to do my 0.98, because that was my old, my old flow ratio, times 95 divided by 100 equals, in my case, the 0.931. So that's what you need to make sure you're plugging in. You're going to get whatever this value is for years. That's what you're plugging in. You're going to solve this in the parentheses first and then solve the rest of the equation. So what popped out in my case was the 0.931. So I went over here, back into Orca. I clicked on my filament profile. Uh, I changed that to 0.931, saved it. Okay. And then you run past two, right? So you come up here to the top. You run flow rate, you run pass number two. Uh, I'm going to say no, I don't want to hold anything. I'm going to discard everything. So again, it's going to load in now these 10 objects for you to go print. Again, it's going to probably make a few changes to things in here around quality and stuff like that. It's fine. Let it do its thing. Don't change anything. Slice your plate, go print. And now we slice this plate. You can see this is now defined too, right? So you can see everything on pass one was basically in in, in plus or minus five flow rate blocks. And now we're going to go in the negative direction, right? So this, this helps you tweak and tune a little bit. So your top one is going to be with your new flow rate that you just plugged in. So in my case, 0 0.931. And now it's going to dial it back a little bit and see if there's a, maybe a slightly better result so you can fine tune your flow rate. So if we go back to the pictures here, I ran past two, and here's what mine looked like. So again, my zero. Looks pretty darn good, 0.931. No gaps, no worries, nice and smooth. Looked really good, felt really good, all that good stuff. Uh, negative one, 
pretty good still still but but a couple gaps you start seeing some gaps down here so a couple of gaps in here a few more gaps a few more gaps so really in my case i just stuck with my 0.931 i didn't make any additional adjustment after this now in your case if you've got something where let's say your negative two now looks better all you need to do now is go back and reapply that to the formula that we just did so if we pop back over here now this would be 0.931 right and here would be 100 um, minus two right and then you would get a new flow rate once you solve for your equation um but maybe you'll get lucky like i did and you didn't have to make any changes on your second pass <clears throat> so um so now that we have our flow rate tuned in and dialed in all it goes go run some prints go check some stuff out see if it's running any better see if it's looking any better uh i think that like um uh your the the wall quality uh top surface bottom surface quality i think you'll notice a difference in there if you were having some over or under extrusion problems previously once you dial in your flow rate and you get that set in your filament profile you're gonna you're gonna have a noticeable difference hopefully in the quality of your prints and then once you've got that set up then you want to roll over and you want to start doing some of the other tests that come with orca slicing so if we go ahead and back these off why don't we go ahead and talk through what some of these other calibration tests are um, before we do that, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that would be great. Drop a comment. If there's something else you want me to go take a look at, please feel free to let me know and I will dive, and I will dive into it. But like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. So from the next calibration test, um, I always like doing, so if I'm talking about like calibration of the machine um, first versus like a filament tuning, right? So I think if you get new filaments, if you change filaments all the time and you really want to run some stuff, then I, I you know, there, there's another test there. But I, I really like this um, Orca tolerance test. So once you've got your flow rate dialed in, <clears throat> it's nice to figure out what the what tolerance your printer can actually handle. So in this case, it's got this little tolerance test. And it's essentially just printing out these six millimeter hexes, right? At different at different tolerances. So this one is going to be dead nuts. Point, uh, six millimeter. And this is going to be with a 0 0.05 millimeter gap, a 0 0.1, a 0.23, and a 4, 0.4 millimeter gap. And it's going to print out this extra little six millimeter um, little, you know, calibration tool that you can basically use to, to jump in here. Now, this is all one part. It's not separated. But if we go ahead and right click and we split this into objects, now you can grab just this one and you can actually see what's happening here. So let's move this over. And this is a, a six millimeter hex cutout, right? And you can see there's little to no gap around the edges, right? And then as you start moving to the right, this is supposed to have a 0.5. Let's see if I can get this. A 0 0.5, 0 0.05, excuse me, 0 0.05 millimeter gap around, a 0 0.1 millimeter gap around. So you can see it, the gap does get a little bit bigger the farther to the right that you go. And this is really just, it's almost like a go, no go uh, gauge for a six millimeter hex head wrench that you can stick in there. And that'll help you figure out exactly what tolerance your printer is printing at based on now that you've got your flow rate tuned. So that's a really great one as well. Um, and it's a short print, right? You slice the plate. It's a 20 something minute print, right? Depending on what your settings are. So that's great. Nice little thing to go do. <clears throat> the next one being is if you're constantly swapping out uh, different types of filament, if you're doing PEPG or doing PLA or different types of PLA, blah, 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 then they've got the temperature test built right in, right? So essentially here, if you click on calibration, you click on temperature test, you tell it which type of material that you're going to be testing against, you give it a starting temp, right? Which would be like the hottest nominal temp, and then the lowest temp that you think. So um, on lots of filaments that show up, like on a lot of my PLA, I get some huge, some huge temperature range that shows up like 190 to 240 or something like that. Feel free to plug those in. We can change this to 240. Um, and then we hit OK. Uh, no, I would not like to save any changes. And it will automatically drop in a temperature test. It'll generate the object for you. It will start down here at the bottom at 240 and it will automatically drop it by five degrees every step up. And then you can take, you know, when it, once it's done, take a look, right? And you get to see uh, which, which temperature setting this, this particular filament prints best at. This is a huge time saver because I remember back in the day, even with, you know, old school Kira, even Idea Maker, I mean, you've got to go in and find your model, right? You've got to either find or build a model off a of Thingiverse and then go in there and plug in exactly 
<clears throat> which layers you want to drop temperatures and by what amount, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it is very nice that this is just built in. You, you select the test, give it parameters, doink, it's in. Slice the plate, go run it. Uh, it's really, um, really cool. Really cool that they do that for us. So with that, I think we're going to call it a night because this is going to get a little bit long if I keep going. But we're going to do a part two for some of the other tests. Uh, but I did want to throw these out there for everybody. So again, thanks very much. Like and subscribe. Go run them. Let me know how it goes for you. Um, all right.